Oprah Winfrey is very, very terrible. She is a very bad force in America. She, her views on religion are heretical. Her views on politics are outrageous and damaging. Her, her deification in the media is nauseating. She's a, a horribly negative influence in American culture. And Oprah Winfrey, true to form, comes out and weighing in on this question of race that we all have to talk about every four years because Democrats think they can win some votes if they gin up racial tensions. Oprah Winfrey, playing her part in doing just that, comes out and uh, from atop her throne of $2.6 billion, tells people that if you're white, you have privilege. If you're black, you're oppressed. If you're white, no matter how poor you are, you have privilege because there's a caste system in America and race can never be overcome. Here is the billionaire, world famous Oprah Winfrey complaining about how oppressed she is. There are white people who are not as powerful as the system of white people, the caste system that's been put in place, but they still, no matter where they are on the rung or the ladder of success, they still have their whiteness. As white people, we, we, even the poorest of the poor, I feel still has a leg up. Um, and it's, yeah, it's and really the leg up is what I was saying. You still have your whiteness. That's what the that's what the term white privilege is. It means that whiteness still gives you an advantage no matter what. That's it. How many books have been written about this? Sold zillions of copies. That if you're white, you get so much privilege, you, you get so many advantages. You get, I'm sure you get advantages in schooling, right? You get advantages in, in applying to college, you get advantages in hiring, don't you? You get, oh, wait a second, you don't, you get disadvantaged. You get, it's exactly the opposite of what she says. We only have one system of legal racial discrimination in this country. It's called affirmative action and it disadvantages white people and Asian people. How Asian people got thrown into the mix, I have no idea, but unfortunately they, through no fault of their own, I don't think they were complicit in, were they complicit in American slavery? I don't think so. But anyway, they get disadvantaged too. And actually people of other races, including black, Hispanic, they are privileged. They are advantaged in a system of legal racial discrimination. That's the reality of it. Some poor guy in Appalachia is not more privileged than Oprah Winfrey because he's a little less tan. It's preposterous on its face. It's outrageous. It's, I, I think it's dishonest because I don't think Oprah Winfrey is so stupid to actually believe the nonsense that she's spouting. So I think it's disingenuous. I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt and say she's lying because otherwise she's profoundly stupid and ignorant. And I don't think that could be the case. I don't think she became a billionaire queen of all media by accident. I think this is a cynical campaign that is premised on you forgetting everything that's actually around you, forgetting not just your history, but even the, the present state of the law. It's so corrosive and it's corrosive, not, not just it, that, that it's unfair to white and Asian applicants to college or to jobs or, or anything like that. It's unfair to the people it privileges too. There's this line that the left always talks about. They say, until we have racial equality, nobody is free right? That, that actually inequality disadvantages even the people who are privileged because we live in this unjust society. Well, that, that's certainly the case here because even if there are legal privileges to being black or Latino when you're applying to colleges or jobs, the very fact that we are now told, that, that, we, that we are now telling children that they can't succeed because of the color of their skin, that's an ugly thing that will hurt their lives. That will da- is, is about the most damaging thing you can possibly tell a child. And it is being pushed by cynical hucksters trying to divide the American people to get votes. So what do we have to do? We have to remind people of what is actually going on and we have to unite people. And this is why Trump is making such a point about the American flag. That's why he's making such a point about the national anthem. He's saying we have to come together as one nation. We have to reject the left divvying us all up, uh, uh, divvying us all up through lies. We have to come together as one nation or we will cease to be a nation. And then everything that we love and cherish about this country will fall apart. 
The, the other thing here is what is being pushed on black people by ideologues who f- think they know what black people want or, or want black people to want what they want is actually not, according to public opinion polls, what black people themselves want in America. There's a new poll Gallup released on Wednesday that found 81% of black people want police spending to remain the same or, or increase in their communities. Now we're told by the elites and the ideologues that black people hate the police. They're being oppressed by the police. They want to defund the police. No, more than four out of five black people, according to Gallup, very respected polling firm, actually a little bit left-wing polling firm, wants the same or more funding for the cops. That number compares to 88% for white Americans, 83% for Hispanics, 72% for Asian Americans, and the whole, the whole U.S. population on average is 86%. There's a big gap between what people want and what ideologues want people to want. Hey, Michael Knowles here, and the fact is, I have very expensive tastes, so please, Be sure to subscribe to The Daily Wire on YouTube because I depend heavily on your support. Thank you very much.